G'day humans, Chris Stead here. Today, I'm reviewing the Vario Aero VR headset. Now, this is kind of something of a white rhinoceros of the PC VR headset space, uh, at least here in Oz anyway. It's kind of really premium, high-end. It's the lesser of the Vario headset range, the Aero, but it's still right at the top of that kind of prosumer market. Bit of a B2B focus as well but it's really started kind of pulling gamers because of its high-end specs. So the question becomes, and if you're a gamer, is the Vario Aero worth it? Is it any good? And you've got to start with the price, right? Now here's the good news for you. As of the day that this video has gone live, which should be September 20, 2023, there's been a huge, huge price drop on this. So it was going for $1,999 US. It's dropping down to $990 US, so more than a 50% discount or slashing of the price. Now here in Australia, we're expecting that to work out to somewhere between $1,500 and $1,600 uh, kind of in the local retailers. Now that puts it uh, a fair bit below the Valve Index and the uh, Vive Pro 2, which are probably its um, these biggest competitors in the premium VR headset space. You could probably put the XR Elite in there as well, although it's kind of, that's not a tether, that's more of a wireless experience. Uh, but that's also well over two thousand dollars here in Australia. But there's a catch: all you get is the headset. So you don't get any controllers. You don't get the base stations that you require to be even able to use it at all. And I've done some looking around trying to work out how you could kind of kit up uh, without actually already going and buying a Pro Two or a Valve Index. And you're still looking at spending another fifteen hundred Australian dollars there just to get a couple of controllers, a couple of base stations. Uh, in order to be able to play the device to begin with. And that's if you go for the Valve Index controls is what I'd highly recommend uh, pairing up with this. So you're still looking at a $3,000 investment and that's probably going to put it out of the league of many of you, uh, unless you're already in that ecosystem, which I'll go into a little bit more as we go through this video. Now, let's talk a little bit about the specs, the specifications. Why is this so much? What are you paying for here? So it starts with a custom-made variable resolution, a spheric mini LED lenses, uh, which are this, you should definitely do some research on those. I was reading up on it, it's, it's really interesting. They start with like a 35, uh, basically pixel density where you're looking, and then it kind of drifts off in its pixel density as you kind of move away from where your eyes are. Uh, but the, the lenses are really impressive. Uh, it's got a 57 to 73 IPD range, but it's automatic. So it actually adjusts for you. You're not trying to adjust it. It's, it, 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 it. You get a really good sweet, a really large sweet spot with this VR headset. And a large part to do with that is the automatic IPD dial, I think. Uh, the resolution, really impressive. Uh, 2880 by 2720 resolution. So that's well above the Pro 2, the Index, anything else that's kind of in that premium BS, VR, uh, PC VR uh, market. Uh, 90 hertz refresh rate isn't awfully impressive. There's better options out there than that. 150 degree field of view, 115 degree field of view, uh, which is okay, solid. Uh, 150 nits of max brightness, 99% sRGB, 95% DCI P3 color gamut. Uh, 200 hertz eye tracking, which is really great, and it works really well too. Uh, so that gives you your fovea to rendering. And you've got yeah, just DisplayPort and USB 3, and it weighs about 717 grams with the head strap. So a bit of weight there, but you don't notice it as I'll talk through in the design in a bit. But there are a few features that are noticeably missing. There's no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth support, especially the latter I think is a bit of a swing and a miss considering that you really love to be able to pair uh, some user-friendly, high-quality Bluetooth headphones to this. Speaking of which, there is no inbuilt sound or mic at all, so that it does come packaged with your basic kind of in-ear uh, mic that'll run to the jack over, jack over here. Uh, that gives you that out of the box, but it's hard, hardly the premium kind of high-end audio experience you really want from a piece of tech this good, uh, and also something that has, um, you know, where immersion is so important. There's no pass-through button. Again, very weird thing to be missing. Uh, there's no, but that's also there's no cameras in the device at all. There's no inside-out tracking. Uh, this is a fully wired experience, and you're going to have those base stations doing all the work in terms of your tracking for you. There's also no opto dial, which again, a little bit curious uh, because it's become something of, I don't want to say standard, but it's a feature that, that helps a lot of people. But I am wondering whether or not it's that big a loss in this because of the automatic IPD dial and the eye tracking is so good that 
perhaps it just didn't need that. Uh, but again, a feature that you will see on other headsets that you won't find on here. Now, let's, let's have a look at the design. Now, as you can see from this close look at the Vario Aero, it's a beautifully designed device. It actually, uh, the, the XR Elite, which has come out, what, two and a half years after this device came out, uh, has taken a lot of cues, I think, from, from where this goes, but I've still never seen anything quite like this in the market. Uh, so I guess we start with the gasket, the, the head, the front end here. Uh, it's big, but this is a beautifully balanced device. And even though it's a 717 kilogram, uh, 717 gram device, it, it doesn't feel heavy. Uh, and I think it's just because it's so well balanced. Uh, up here, we've just got an action button. This is gonna kind of allow you to kind of interact with things inside the virtual world. You've got a menu here as well as you can get to. Uh, and over the, over, the, over the side here, you've got your headphone jack. Now, it's a reasonably simplified design because there's not much else going on. There's no inside-out tracking, there's no pass-through, there's no IPD dials, that's all that's done automatically, it's all in the device. So there's not too much else going on around it. it makes it nice and sleek and, and kind of beautiful to look at. This can come out, by the way, if you want to uh, detach it for whatever reason. But the beauty really lies in all the adjustments over here. So they're called a three-point design. So you've got this top head strap here, which you can move in and out, which is, gives you so much more flexibility with your head design. And, it, and then you've got kind of a, a movable cup here, or kind of a, I don't know what you'd call that. Uh, it sits at the base of your skull. This can come in and out as well, of course. This is kind of a really like high density plastic they've got here. Uh, but then you've also got these side dials here, which can then bring your, the headset up and down basically. And on both sides, so you can really adjust it into this kind of perfect, perfect spot, unlike any other headset that I've used before. And as a result, there's no light bleed at all. Your nose sits perfectly in here and it moves back and forth and just snugs your head. It's, it's probably the most comfortable VR headset I've ever worn. It really does fit nice and snug. And then, then you've got that kind of eye tracking in there and the auto calibration of it all when you've got it in that sweet spot. So, and, but you can also swap it between people quite easily because it's so easily adjustable. So there's not much to it, but they've done a really good job with the design of this. And it's probably a benchmark, I'd say, in terms of the design of VR headsets, in terms of what I've used so far anyway, and I've used most of them. Now, of course, part of the journey when you're looking at PCR v PC VR headsets is the setup process. And it's a steep learning curve if you've never been there before, but if you have gone through it in any shape or form, this is uses like, for example, Steam VR, which you would use if you've used a Valve Index, probably if you've used any of the Vive headsets as well, uh, you will be reasonably familiar and it, you know, it, it has improved over time, the software, and the setup process I found with this to be pretty straightforward, even though if you were coming to it first time, I think it's still quite overwhelming. Uh, there's Vario uh, Base, um, which is kind of their, it's their software, and that's kind of got to give you the ability to kind of customize a lot of the features, customize the performance inside of it. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to get into. They've done a pretty good job with it actually, and there's no subscription either, which is also a positive. Then you've got your Steam VR setup which once you've got all your updates happened and software's updated and the VR's upset, updated and everything's kind of, the controls are where they need to be and everything like that. I actually, it, it works pretty well nowadays. It does sync up, it's just a bit of a hassle because you've still got these base stations and a lot of headsets have now moved past that. The um, XR Elite, if you've seen the review of the XR Elite I did on the channel recently, you'll know that that does away with all of that now. No need for base stations, but you'll have these two base stations set up. Those require power points if you're running this off a laptop or a desktop, that's going to require a power point. You're going to need more power points to charge things. You've got um, power for the actual headset itself as well. So a lot of power points you need. So the setup process uh, for a PC VR setup process, it, did, it, was, it, was, it was good, it was fine. Uh, but if you've never encountered it before, uh, yeah, it can be a bit of a challenge. So let's get into the performance. And there's no being around the bush here. This looks amazing. The visuals in this are so crisp, so fresh, uh, so immersive. The text uh, is so, it's, it's, it's crisp, it's better than using my normal eyes, <laughs> I've got to say. Uh, the, uh, the detail that comes out in the world, you know, like you're paying a lot and it's 
there's high end tech in here, but it does definitely deliver uh, a visual performance, which is really, really quite special. And uh, yeah, I was really quite impressed by it. The way that the kind of eye tracking works, the, the, the automatic IPD dial, that type of thing, uh, definitely improves the experience and accentuates uh, each game, kind of rises it above what it might be on other headsets. The eye calibration thing at the start was a bit annoying uh, just because it was so frequently asking me to do it, but it was mostly because I hadn't quite worked out the adjustments of the headset. And when you kind of get the headset to exactly the right place, then you only really have to do it once, which means just kind of staring at this dot and it just sinks in and it all does it kind of for you. There's not too much that you have to do there, but once it's going, the performance of it is really, really good. The field of view, I was, uh, Okay, it's, 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 it's not bad. It doesn't kind of diminish, like I've seen some headsets, for example, depending on the software and the demand that's going on, the field of view can really tighten into like a, sub, like a periscope style view. I wasn't getting that, but I was getting this really weird kind of ceiling to it where if I, right up here, there was this like little flickering of kind of just, it was like it was maxing out. It was like, it was almost like the, the, the experience wasn't reaching the whole way of the field of view. And so there was just this kind of, alien space above there that was just struggling a little bit. So I don't know if that's specific to this headset, uh, just a unit that's taken a knock somewhere along the line between reviewers, but that's my experience with it. And I'd be interested just in the comments, if anyone else has got that experience as well, just please drop a note so we can try and determine whether or not this is something that's cr across the set or not. So that's something that was a little bit uh, of, a, of, a, of a downer for me, but it didn't really increment, in, uh, impact me consistently. It was just sometimes it's like, oh, what is that? Now I'm noticing that. Uh, obviously, it's tethered. So you still got this kind of cable kind of roped over the side of your shoulder or getting in your feet and getting in your way. Uh, it's not a thick cable and it's a pretty good quality one. It hasn't tangled on me an awful lot, but once you've kind of dropped the tethered experience and gone wireless, uh, the tethered experience does feel like a little bit of, oh, it's just a pain, you know? It's just the one cable, but it's still a bit of a pain. Uh, but that's part of the experience you're just gonna have to deal with. Uh, the one thing I do have to point out with the performance though is that a lot of the software you're gonna be using and playing and or even just the apps experiences, like I was, I, was, I actually really got into Google Earth with this, um, is that a lot of the software is made for MetaQuest level headsets. So you're kind of bottlenecked in a lot of respects. And if you're going to put a lot of money into investing in one of these, and then you're going to turn around and start playing a game which is, avail is, is available on all headsets, then it's going to be bottlenecked to the performance levels of those lower end wireless headsets. And therefore, it's not going to look a heck of a lot better. Uh, but if, you, if you're going to go there and really find those, that software that's really going to look great in this, uh, the performance was really impressive. The Vario Aero lives up to the hype in many, many ways. The visual experience is just, well, probably second to none in terms of what I've experienced thus far across the VR headset range. It's a really comfortable headset to wear. I love the little designs I've got going on and all the adjustments. I love the automatic IPD and the eye tracking was exceptional as well. The performance of this thing is, is really, really good. But Vario's claims of it being a future-proof headset for short for me. Where we're seeing a space going is we're seeing a space going into wireless, we're seeing a space going into inside-out tracking, and we're seeing the space kind of go into that flexibility of an XR headset which can do mixed reality and augmented reality and virtual reality and do all that type of stuff. And, and this falls short of that. It doesn't have the features there to allow for that type of experience. And as a result, using the base stations, having the tether, not having to pass through, all of that things just feels a bit clunky despite the awesome performance that you're getting. And even with the big price drop, for me, unless you're already in the ecosystem, unless you've already got Valve Index controllers and you've already got base stations set up because you've previously invested in one of those other kits and now you're looking for something that just offers a bit better visual experience because you have a, maybe you've got a PC or a laptop that can handle that quality of uh, performance. If you're in the ecosystem, it's look, it's you know at that new price point, it's worth considering for sure because it's it's a great VR headset. But if you're not and you're looking to buy this thing outright, I just in 2023, I just think this thing isn't as future proof as they claim. 
and you're probably not gonna get the value there because it just isn't enough software that really maximizes what this thing can offer for gamers. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Vario Aero. I'm really happy that I got a chance to finally use this after reading so much about it. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out my other VR reviews on the channel, including the HTC Vive XR Elite, which I put up just a couple of weeks ago. Until next time, check you later. Thank mm -hmm. you.